Um, thank you for giving up time for your kids, your grandkids, whatever connection or association you have to all of this. Um, how many of you have been able to recover your kids? How many of you are here to, to recover your kids? Awesome. All right. Uh, this is the way of doing it. This is the way of learning. Um, it's unfortunate that the information that I've learned, even as a naturopathic doc, while well, working with a uh, few patients, and uh, I think the single biggest thing and most important thing is to help parents understand what's happening to their kids. Um, most of you do end up earning, earning honorary medical degrees in uh, the process. That's part of understanding it all. Uh, I like to think that myself as a physician can help save you from having to do some of that homework that, uh, you know, get out there. There are, we're, we're starting to work on getting more Dan-oriented doctors, whether they're naturopathic doctors, medical doctors, whomever, but with that background to be able to help you because we need parents getting proper night's sleep and uh, focusing in on the things that really count and that you do best and hopefully encouraging you to bring a knowledgeable physician onto your team and let them do the grunt work over the science. But you, your responsibility is to keep me challenged. <laughs> Make me work every day. And believe me, in eight years, nine years of doing this, this is a rapidly evolving science. My lecture this morning is probably around the, the new buzzwords at the DAN conferences, neuroinflammation and oxidative stress. When I went to my first DAN conference back in 2006, these words weren't even being uttered, or certainly not in the context that they are today. So you, that's an example of how much the science even in this field is changing. Um, so bear with me. Hopefully you're going to find some interest here. Um, not going to be talking about a lot of the standard points in this particular presentation around diet, infections, supplements to a certain degree. Um, what I want to be hitting on are some new ideas that may be able to help explain why your kids have developed um, autism or Tourette's syndrome or the other neurodevelopmental problems that they have. To me, while the dietary aspects, the nutritional supplements, the treating the infections are still important, they're still a factor, but autism or neuro de neurodevelopmental disorders are multifactorial problems. And we can eliminate certain things, we can change the diet and it can have a positive effect, but if there's still something biochemically amiss with your kids, you're going to either be challenged to recover them or you're going to be challenged to keep them recovered. So it's great that the biochemistry and the understanding of it is coming along so that as you're implementing more radical therapies, think of them in a certain way like B12 injections, you're going to understand and have that conviction to keep giving your child that needle every three days. Okay. Um, let me stream along for a while here. I will try to make this interactive and take some of your questions. Uh, if I'm really good, I will give, be able to give you about 10 minutes at the end to answer questions. But there's a lot of slides to cover here. So here we have your child's brain being pulled in a lot of different directions. As I've said, multifactorial. There's a, you know, various things that are vying for the brain's attention or impacting on the brain's ability to function normally. Um, oxidative stress and neuroinflammation are just one of them. Now neuro, of course, is referring to nerves. It's referring to the brain. Inflammation is a pathology. It's an irritation. Um, when you have inflammation in the knee, inflammation in the skin, it's going to be red. It's going to be hot. Now you're not necessarily going to see your kids or not be able to determine that their brain is inflamed and hot. And that's why we need lab testing to be able to help that but you may be able to see that in their behavior by being overexcited. Oxidation. Um, they, we see this in everyday life. Um, cut an apple open and then leave it sit on the counter. What happens? Goes brown. That is oxidation. That is the flesh of the apple breaking down. Um, who here wants to own a building that's built of metal 
that is rusting away. At some point or time, if that rust isn't stopped, that building's going to crumble and fall down. Now, that may be decades, if not over 100 years away, but the point is that process is happening and negatively impacts on the structural integrity of that building. Now think of oxidative stress in that same manner happening inside your child's nervous system. And I don't like using fear tactics very often, but quite frankly, it's happening in all of us. It's what prematurely ages us. You've got a lot of people now out there looking for Botox injections and um, other means of um, being able to achieve or bring about the fountain of youth that humans have been looking for for probably a thousand years. And all we're really fighting a bit against is oxidative stress. And there's more in our life and our world that's creating this oxidative stress and moving it ahead quicker than would have been the case 100 years ago. We have to deal with this as adults, not as severely as your children have to deal with it in terms of their challenges. They've been hit hard early. They've been hit with huge concentrations that we handle as adults with little kids with little organs that aren't ready to handle that level of stress. This is what I'm learning as a DAN practitioner needs to be corrected. So the uh, reactions in oxidative stress are involving free radicals, typically ox oxygen or hydroxy free radicals that adapt the body's ability uh, to deal with certain changes. And these free radicals are damaging right at the genetic level. It's getting in there and digging away at DNA and RNA. It causes swelling in the nervous system. I think that's a big chunk that I haven't been able to quite put together yet as a physician with information that is starting to come around being out there, but swelling around the brain. Uh, if you think of the skull, it's a finite space. And if the brain has to um, go through some swelling because of inflammation, there's going to be pressure created in there, and pressure shuts things down and keeps them from functioning properly. So keep that analogy in mind of what may be explaining what's happening to your kids, what's happening in terms of some of the, some of the variability. They can have a good day in terms of inflammation, and they can have a bad day in terms of inflammation, and that can account for some of their changes. So normally, when things are heating up, we like to think that we can keep them in control. So we have this picture here indicating a fire in a fireplace, <clears throat> but sometimes it gets out of control. And the fireman in this picture is really how we are trying to learn and understand how we can, A, put that fire out, and B, after that, prevent it from happening again so that our heads aren't popping off and exploding when we least expect it. Um, the science, as I've alluded to, is certainly there and it's developing. Um, there are two papers that I'm referring to in this presentation, this one by Dr. McGinnis. If you have a chance to either go to a DAN conference or um, I know that sometimes that's just hard to work into um, your daily routine with everything that you have to do with your kids, go to the various websites, whether it's uh, autism.com, um, autism1.org. These are sites where you can uh, catch uh, presentations from different conferences by people like Dr. McGinnis and where you can hear their presentations.